this morning we're going to start a new project. Um, I have an antique pie table and it has a lot of staining, water stains. The finish just does not look very good. It does have its original um, Paul brass pieces, so we'll remove those, get those cleaned up nicely, get this piece cleaned up. It is a mahogany piece. It's Mahogany Association Ink. I've seen this on many pieces. It's not a unusual piece around here. This piece is actually my sister's and she wants it back to its original kind of a cherry color, I believe. So we'll go ahead and get it stripped down, get all that um, shellac off of it and see what kind of color we've got under here and go from there. So let's get started. What I think I heard my sister say was, for every like that we get on this video, she would pay an extra dollar to have this refinished. So let's be sure and button bash those like buttons. So the first thing that we've done is we've put some denatured alcohol in here. And um, we are just going to take some 4 aught steel wool. And we're just going to get this, um, get the shellac finish off of it. I don't think that this is going to be a difficult restore. A lot of you have tables like this or, um, you know, pieces that have water stains in them and so forth. And there are many ways to remove water stains. So this is just, just one of the many ways. That is not doing well. Let's try something else. I got a bad, bad feeling. Okay, you know when I said that this shouldn't be too hard of a process? Well, someone has refinished this before and they used a polyurethane rather than a shellac finish, which makes it just a bit more of a challenge. We're gonna have to use some stripper. Um, so the stripper of your choice and then we will remove this. The uh, thin, it's a thin coat of poly, but it is poly or something, but it's, yeah, it's not coming, not as quickly as I had hoped, but, and it's a little stickier of a mess, but we'll get there in the end. This is probably a reproduction. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is not an antique. It may be, uh, um, maybe 70, 80 years old. So it's not a true antique. These are called pie tables because of the, um, it's like a pie crust around the edges just a little side table tea table middle's pretty good it's got a few burn marks so somebody who smoked used this table and uh weren't very careful with their cigarettes so at some point All right, that's pretty good on the top. So let's get the legs, make sure that they look just as nice. And then we'll come back and we'll put a finish on this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove these little, these little feet and get them soaking so that they can be all cleaned up. They were just put on with little tiny nails on the side. So we're just gonna remove those. Making sure that we don't lose them. Just, just on with little, wee tiny little nails. And then they should just 
kind of pop off. Give it a little wiggle. So just like that. Again, I'm just going to put these in a little baggie, label them as to which piece they go on, and then <clears throat> once the feet have been cleaned up, then I'll put them in the same baggie with them and they'll be ready to go back on whenever we're done with the piece. I'm going to show you a great way to clean some hardware. I have this small crock pot and this has vinegar and water in it and I just leave it in there all the time. Um, and then all of my dirty hardware I put in there. This is still a little warm so I don't want to stick the, my hands in there. I just put it in there, soak it, put it on low overnight, come back the next morning, get them out. Once they're out, I just get a little brass brush, just give them a scrub. This takes all the grease off, any paint that may have been put on them. A lot of us get pieces and they've, somebody's gotten the bright idea to paint the hardware. It'll take that off. Now, if you've got really shiny hardware, this is, this is like an antique hardware, but if you had really shiny hardware, you definitely wouldn't want to use the wire brush. Um, Cause then you would have, I guess, brushed hardware. May not be the look you're going for. Okay, so now we've got it all stripped down. And what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and put a shellac finish back on this and make it pretty again. So I've just got a dauber ball, which is just cotton, a cotton t-shirt wrapped in cheesecloth. And I have a two pound cut of shellac and I'm just gonna start putting layers on. This is just gonna put it back to the same color it was um, in its original state. Not adding any color to this. Um, just want to get these edges done. And then we'll put this piece back together. Got the feet all cleaned up. They look nice. We'll take a look at those when we put them back on. Remember, if, you're, if your dauber starts to dry, it'll start dragging. Otherwise, you're just going to want to just keep going back and forth. And it'll take many coats on this, so you just keep, just keep going and letting it dry. It won't, it'll flash very quickly. It'll flash dry very quickly, so um, it doesn't take long to get many coats. But you're going to want to, you know, do a light sand in between each of these coats. And by the time that you get done, you'll have a surface that's just, just so soft and smooth that it'll just feel really nice. You can do this with a brush. You can do it with a, a foam brush. Um, I just prefer to use a dauber ball on flat surfaces. I may use a brush here on these, um, on these legs. It just really depends on how this works. If, if one method doesn't work, try another. This is really thin. So, um, you're, you know, you're going to want to be really careful about it running, but you're just going to want to get it in into those crevices really nicely. This seems to be doing okay. There are other ways that would be faster, 
Um, I'm not so much worried about how fast I do it as to that it, I don't have runs all over it. Shellac and I have a love-hate relationship. I love the way it looks. I hate to put it on because sometimes we can have issues. I have been known that it will take me, you know, several days to get the top of a piece the way I want it doing shellac because I just sometimes have have trouble with patience and um yeah so it's it's one that sometimes eludes me but in the end it always looks fantastic and I'll go find a small brush to do this part with the key to doing a good shellac is to put it on and walk away don't play with it. If there are mistakes, fix them on the next coat. If you find information in the videos helpful, you like the content, please remember to hit that like button. And a lot of you that watch are not subscribed, please remember to subscribe. It really does help our channel to grow. And we really do appreciate all the support that we are receiving. The response to the channel has just been fantastic and we really do appreciate it. I have some amber shellac made with the amber flakes and we're going to try that on this to me it looks like the legs are a little more amber than the tabletop and the reason for that is probably that wherever this was sitting before probably was sitting in a window and sun hitting it has probably bleached it just a bit so i'm going to use the amber and see if that evens out those tones a little bit this time i'm just putting it on with a synthetic brush Just nice thin coats. Okay, now that this coat has dried, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to use some steel wool and just give it a little 
just a little sand, just a little light sand. This is um, double art steel wool, so very light. And we're just taking out any high spots in that shellac coat that, and taking out any dust particles, anything like that, that might be in it. I think the amber really did kind of even out that tone a bit, so that's what we wanted. Now the legs and the top are closer match than they were because I've just misted my rag. It's not wet, just enough to pick up any dust particles that that might leave. So you pick up quite a bit of dust when you do that. Okay, we've put another three coats of shellac on the table. While we're waiting on that last one to dry, um, we're going to talk about the feet. Now, I got the feet all cleaned up, took them out of the crock pot, but they've, they've been abused in the past. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of rub and buff on these. And it's an antique gold rub and buff. And I think that will just um, give them a little, little bit of spark, make them look a little bit better. Just rubbing it in. Thinking those little sections, I'm going to have to use a brush, but most of the time I just tap it with my finger. And then we'll get these back on, and this table will be looking much more spruced up. While we're waiting on the rub and buff to dry on those feet, let's go ahead and um, wax up these legs. They've already been shellacked, looking really good. And we're just going to put a little wax on. Um, I quite like this Howard's feed in wax and so we're going to put some of that on it'll just make it feel nice and give it some more protection this is the leg that had the repair on it and we'll take a look at that repair while we're doing this um, and the reason that I did not take this apart is it's holding quite well. Whoever did it did a great job. Um, and what they did is they took, it's broken right here. And what they did is they took, it looks like two dowels, very, very small. And what they did is they put them through the foot this way and into the leg in that orientation. So they're sticking this piece to this piece with the dowels. They've glued those in and then they've also glued the brake and it is holding together fantastic. There is absolutely zero movement in there and I think that's probably the best thing to do is just leave it alone. Um, there's I mean, there's no other, no other way to do that repair that I, I mean, I'm sure there is, but I think that's a good way to do it. So we're going to leave it alone and we're just going to get this waxed up. Just using some, um, steel wool, very fine steel wool and just putting that on and that's just going to make this feel nice and smooth give it a lot more protection make it look pretty this stuff smells so good it's a bees wax polish and it smells amazing now that the feet are all dry let's go ahead and get those put back on they'll just slide on like that Okay. 
and we'll put the base back on same way it came off Let's take a look at what this piece looked like before. And now let's take a look at what it looks like now. We've left its historic marks in it, but I think it looks much better now. Nice and fresh and ready for a new life. If you enjoyed this video please remember to hit the thumbs up subscribe to our channel and we will see you next week for an epic restoration on a buffet you'll really enjoy this one if you like old furniture that's being refinished <laughs>